Hey everybody, Rodham here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 10 of Stationeers. So last episode we made a fabricator so that we could make a nuclear battery, uh, but as it was pointed out by Rafe, is that the nuclear battery will charge faster than an APC. The battery charger has a limit of 500 watts, so as it doesn't blow out any cables or anything, the APC has a higher limit, uh, so we will put that in there. Uh, there would be a way to test this if you are so interested by grabbing our um, tablet here and putting the network analyzer in in the place of the uh, atmospheric analyzers that we had. And as you can see, our current power draw is about 1.5 kilowatts. And let me just uh, free up some space here. Switching the batteries around. The power draw is 970 kilowatts. So, obviously, what we conclude from this is that uh, when the nuclear battery is in the APC slot, it draws more power. Um, so, we will, in fact, leave it in that spot. Uh, and that way, it gets charged up faster. Now, the nuclear battery has so much capacity, it's going to take a while. Uh, so, the project I have in mind for this episode is much like uh, if you were on Earth and you had put up the foundations of a building or a house or something, uh, you would be probably, um, the next step would be to set up some plumbing and electrical, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's what we're going to work on. And I'm going to primarily uh, work with the uh, fabricator now. It might be a little bit slower, but that's okay. So a lot of people asked about what I am doing with this uh, hole in my base, as you uh, so aptly pointed out. I was not going to have it just be an open hole. Um, actually, that would be a problem for me because the frames between floors, eventually I plan to be hollow. Uh, so if it was an open hole, uh, that would be kind of problematic. But uh, what I will do is have like a glass floor of sorts. All right, let's turn on our fabricator again. And what I'm going to do is crank out some walls, kit wall. Uh, this is, of course, on the fabricator, it takes a very long time to find stuff just because there's so much stuff to be constructed. All right, I'm going to make uh, six of those. Now, I had um, opened up the valve for the... Uh, furnace here so that we could start to smelt some stuff Additionally a lot of people have been asking about my hunger uh, hunger is enabled. I just haven't been critically hungry in a while um, And as a result, I haven't had the you better eat something prompt Okay So my plan here was to put uh, windows like this just so that you could see through the base, but you can't fall through the base. Um, despite it being Mars, uh, there is still fall damage. And uh, oh, this is not a glass sheet, is it? That's a steel sheet. And I'd prefer not to just break an ankle um, walking around the base. That's uh, that'd be a pretty dumb way to die. So it's actually just going to be flush like this, and I'll be able to see down uh, to lower floors that way. And because there was a lot of concern, I don't know why, but there was a lot of concern about that hole there. I could always fill it up if it's pretty clear that uh, there is unanimous uh, desire to do so, but... I think, I think now that it is like a pretty construction feature, uh, there'll be probably, hopefully, less pushback. Alright, and then I have two spare uh, walls at the end of this. And actually, we have a... Uh, hole in the top of the base as well and I do have a wall unit to plop there there we go 
Perfect. All right. Well, I will. What I'll do is I'll put so that I know where this stuff is. I will lightly toss, not football quarterback toss. I'll lightly toss it on my construction materials out front. And as you can see, this is not uh, going to get me killed or anything. What will be actually interesting here is I'll be able to see into the hollow um, mid structures. Uh, if you're on a floor that doesn't have an elevator, now, granted, uh, once the base is closed up, that's not all that possible unless I turn this into multiplayer. You can always call it like this. Just by hitting the, the button on the door here. And that will call it to your level. So we are still pulling in um, oxygen and nitrogen from the atmosphere to fill our storage tanks. Uh, the next thing I would say is to start to lay out some uh, electrical and plumbing. Okay, thank you game for letting me know I am hungry. Now I've just, uh, because of the uh, great excess that my farm produces, uh, I have not yet depleted my cereal bars, uh, but what I can do once I do deplete my cereal bars is set up some cooking and things like that. Now, much like how the farm here has um, back pressure and pressure, uh, that's probably how I'm going to set up the, uh, the rest of the base around here. Now, the only issue with this is, of course... Um, that our beautiful base uh, is a much more uh, voluminous, you know, has a gr much higher volume. So it will be a lot more costly to uh, sort of filter the base, pressurize the base, heat the base. So I need to build all the systems they have in the small little uh, hydroponic farm much larger and wider here. Uh, so that is the trouble and then additionally because i um because there is really nothing connecting the floors here except for the elevator shaft i'm also going to need to make uh, a little bit of structural changes because i'm planning on running the pipes i need to run the pipes somewhere so as you can see here with my temporary really shabby really ugly power cables uh, there isn't really a structure that i can run stuff through and what I could do is I can put this structure here on the back of the uh, of the elevator so that I eventually I can hide all of my infrastructure that way so let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna need some steel frames now I will absolutely acknowledge that the fabricator is not the most efficient um, uh, tool to create frames it, basically, all of these things here are faster but less convenient. Um, the f the electric printer and the auto lathe and the uh, pipe bending, uh, they all are, of course, faster at it. But I have to keep moving materials around every time I want to uh, I want to use a different unit. Uh, it's possible to mine out enough resources so you can keep all three smaller benches uh stocked um it's just i'm i'm not i'm hoping to avoid spending that much time mining as i guess my point so if we keep the sort of backbone infrastructure of our base uh we're going to need to remove that wall unit uh back here um, that will help to hide a lot of the sort of ugliness that we get running pipes everywhere and wires everywhere. So that's going to be a, uh, a future project. And then it also occurs to me I have the wrong tool, tool belt on. So let me fix that. So as I said, let's uh, start to work on setting up this base so that it gets to be habitable uh, sooner than later. All right. So I'm trying to keep track of all of my building materials so I don't end up duplicating or or worse all of my um, all the stuff I need. You know, I don't I don't want to basically 
make more steel frames or more wall units that I need. Uh, of course, given that this is a base in its very early stages, um, we all, it's, it's not of uh, immediate, um, you know, it's, it's, it, we don't, we don't of course need to immediately be careful about that because any sort of excess stuff I construct, I'm surely going to use. So now, to get a uh, piping and wiring from the behind the elevator, we need to make some changes here as well. Uh, which means ripping up some of the stuff we've already built. Uh, this is just the nature of um, the nature of base design. Uh, you will, you know, it's it's what I really like to call iterative improvements. Uh, you make something and then you realize, well, that something that I made is good, but uh, I need to make some slight changes to make it better, and then better, and then better, and then eventually you have some sort of, you know, you can start off with a Model T and end up with a uh, Lamborghini, so to speak. And I'm not saying that I'm going to make a Lamborghini, but if you were to live in a uh, stationer's base long enough, uh, of, of course it's going to look nicer and be improved over time. So this is what I mean. I'm going to run my uh, cables through here, which changes the the way the base looks and is laid out. Uh, and I'm going to need to do this on every floor. And then I'm probably going to work on the infrastructure so that uh, the base is, shall we say, uh, pretty, because you know this is my my Lincoln log home. So and. Uh, Beautification, uh, I guess, matters to me. All right, so I could be doing this a little bit faster um, by just throwing um, construction materials around. I want to make sure not to deconstruct the elevator shaft. And then additionally, instead of elevator shafts, if we're going to use uh, mid floors, I could go with um, uh, levels on each level. So that is a possible solution here. Looks like my nuclear battery is charged up to high. That's good. Means we're um, moving in the right direction here. I'm just gonna craft probably more than I immediately need. Just cause it takes a while. And now that it's dark, I can also do some smelting. Uh, that's something that you're really not gonna be able to do very easily in the day. I do plan on uh, setting up uh, in my basement, setting up a, a space to do smelting and stuff like that. Even having an automated, fully automated uh, furnace, meaning it it uh, controls its own temperature and all that. Um, that is a plan of mine. Um, I'm not quite there yet, but, but uh, that is something I will be adding to this base so that we don't have to keep feeding it gases. Especially considering we're storing all the gases. Uh, there was one tip I got, which was, there is a new gas um, introduced into stationers, sort of since I played the most, which is uh, nitrous oxide, NO2, or, yeah, I think it's NO2, right? Um, which means that I probably will need to add one more tank to my setup here. Uh, there isn't a clear... There isn't an obvious spot to put said tank, uh, but I'll figure that out. As you can see, I queued up 15. I only have six. Uh, the fabricator does take a while. And in the interest of symmetry, I will mirror left and right. And it looks like I have some space where I haven't even put down plastic as well. You know, like this hasn't had uh, plastic added to it. Might be the only spot though. And this, uh, this changes the base a little bit. Certainly it looks a, a quite a bit different as a result. 
Oops, I meant to throw my sheets <laughs> through the crowbar. That's something you have to be careful of, because you could very easily just huck a, a tool uh, so far that it, it becomes impossible to find. And uh, the tool manufactory is not the most expensive construction that you would, you know, it's, it's replaceable. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Now, alternative, um, not alternatively, but uh, what what ended up happening due to the slight change is we can now use we can now ex expand the base a little bit and have this be a functional space here, um, which means yes, tearing up more walls, uh, but it gives it the lived-in feeling, right? Come on. Uh, so eventually this will be floored off. So I'm not worried about it being a uh, hole. You know, it's not going to stay that way. So there we go. And that, of course, uh, increases the volume again. But, you know, these... These little projects here will pay off. We'll have a prettier base as a result. And then I'm going to add a window up top here. And that means that we'll have uh, some frame contacts. One of the issues with this base is if you have buttons, levers, if you have objects to interact with, uh, previously in the previous design, there was not really a spot to put it other than the floor, which is hideous. Uh, in 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 my uh, opinion, you know, you don't want controls put on the floor, but this uh, opens up one frame unit worth of uh, space or a two because it's symmetrical, uh, where we can put um, you know control panels and stuff like that. So in a farm, the control panels uh, might look something like uh, you know a emergency flush button, where if you get um, if you get a gas like X into your atmosphere somehow, I don't, I don't know how that would happen if you've designed it correctly. But let's say you do, uh, you can hit the button and flush out the uh, the atmosphere. Uh, of course, that will kill the plants, but that might be something you need to do. Um, all right, and then of course we will be adding uh, frames here as well. So let's get that going. Um, Put these down and this will allow for as I said more uh, control surfaces on each floor so the second floor is gonna be our sort of lounge kitchen that kind of stuff um, it doesn't need a whole lot of control surfaces but we still might want some you know we might want one for uh, power to to turn off all of the lights or you know it's just whatever it doesn't even really matter and then on the bottom floor, we have a lot of control surfaces, uh, potentially. Uh, but what we're going to do is put... I might end up moving the battery. I'm almost certainly going to move the battery. Um, but of course, the bottom floor uh, has all these walls and stuff like that. So mimicking the floors above, I'm going to build the frames out here too. Um, and then I'll probably repipe a little bit to be able to access that area. Uh, but what I'm what I'm talking about is uh, something like this. A little bit of a redesign here now. The issue, of course, with me, or for me, is that I have sort of a uh, mental image of what this base will look like. Um, and you guys wouldn't. <laughs> you know, so I'm trying to have you envision what I envision. And uh, that's a little, it can be a little tough. But it will, it will shape together. 
I just realized that because it is such a work in progress, it's hard to critique it. Uh, well, maybe not as hard. It might not be hard. You might say, oh, I hate it. But it's hard to critique it uh, in its you know, final state because only I can really picture that. Um, all right, so what I was going to do here is these will be frames as well, uh, like the floors above. And that gives us um, a nice 1x3 area here to work with, which will, con you know, this will be sort of the infrastructure backbone. All right, so let me go ahead and move all this back to the front. What I should have done during the night there is uh, smelted, uh, because you can't really smelt during, well, you can smelt during the day once you have a furnace room, but uh, I haven't built one of those, so I'm not really able to smelt during the day. Hopefully we haven't used too, we've mostly just used steel. We haven't used too much of our resources. All right, so now that fundamentally changes the way that lay, is laid out. Um, another thing I want to do is to be able to access the mid-levels. Um, hmm. I'll probably not have it accessible from this elevator shaft, now that I think about it, because then it will have to have airlocks. Uh, okay, so the, I guess the next thing is to decide where some of the plumbing is going to go, now that that is all nice and laid out. So let's get some plumbing stuff. We're going to want, um, a, you know, a few back pressure and pressure regulators per floor, which means passive vents. So I'm going to lay down the passive vents first. Which is a little tricky to do because, God, I have to find it. Like I said, I might want to use the smaller... Oh, I could make a hard suit. A uh, hard suit requires smelted lead. I did have some lead here. Yeah, it might be worth um, arc furnacing a few lead to make a hard suit. And that costs a lot of invar doesn't it? Well, that's okay. I, I made giant batches of the stuff. Um, yes, as you can see here, there's stuff like handguns and f firearm SMGs and energy rifles, energy pistols, etc, etc. Uh, one of the... There's a lot... A lot of this is in progress, and one of the things they plan on adding is the ability or the, uh, like, enemies. Uh, like, you know, originally I think the idea floated was, like, spiders and, and the like. Um... But, uh, you know, this game is a work in progress for sure. All right, so what I'm going to do is put large batteries in my drill and angle grinder so they don't run out while I'm constructing uh, for a very, very long time. And then it looks like the nuclear battery here is full. Um, that means that I'm basically going to be able to almost ignore the fact that I have battery. Now, the, of course, the only issue here is I don't have two of them, so it's not like I can swap between them. So there's my hard suit. Hard suits are more resilient. They're tougher than uh, the EVA suits. Uh, they're, of course, a lot more costly. Um, but I am making... making the upgrade to a hard suit and a helmet all right so swapping the helmet's really simple um, you know you just hold one because your helmet doesn't have anything in it uh, so as you can see let me swap it again as you can see it, it looks considerably different um, and then my old helmet Eventually, I'm going to have a recycler, and I'll be able to recycle all of my uh, sort of broken stuff. And then uh, the suit here has, as you can see, um, more space for stuff. So I'm going to try my best to uh, swap. I think what I'll do is put their suit on, and then... Air 
before I pass out, put everything in oxygen, waste tank, life support, etc., etc. Put the filters in, and this can hold more filters. And now my old EVA suit is empty. Uh, I do believe I have another, yeah, I have another old EVA suit too. Again, from smashing into things. Now, with a hard suit, uh, you know, I'm going to be a lot more resilient if I bump into things. And that was a, a pretty good use of this lead here. Alright, I'm going to start arc smelting iron. And then we want some passive vents. So most of the pressurization in the base that we're going to lay out will be through passive vents. I'm going to make 14 of them. Uh, the larger your base is, the more vents you'll need. If I only had one or two vents, I wouldn't be able to move a lot of um, a lot of atmosphere around the base. So we're just going to need to stack the vents on uh, like crazy. And then I have to decide sort of what the layout will be. Now another one, another issue is going to be um, I don't want pressure regulators and back pressure regulators um, sort of dotting around my entire base. That I don't think would be all that attractive. So um, what I'm going to have to do is to wire them up so that they're controlled uh, sort of remotely. So I think what I'm going to do is have the uh, vents here all point back to um, the back of the base here and maybe have, hmm, I think I'll have three per floor. Uh, actually, I just need a uh, wrench for here. So if we want to remote control them, we can set up a console to control the vents uh, as well. Consoles can basically control uh, really anything you wire them to. So see this console here, this, uh, you know, that one specifically controls an airlock, but we can have ones with power controls or, you know, I can set it up for pressure controls, stuff like that. So. You know, actually, on second thought, it makes uh, more sense if I have uh, four vents per floor, two input, two output. All right, and that will be good for this floor. And basically, we'll be... Oh, I didn't even center this correctly. We'll be pushing air through these vents and pulling air out of these vents. All right. And that will be our second to top floor. Now, of course, the challenge here is on the top floor, meaning the farm. Um, venting is a little bit different because we don't have a roof. Uh, so if I wanted vents, I might have to put them on the ground. And what I'm going to do is put them right up into the corners of the room, like that. And then I could have a vent, uh, the vent that pulls... Uh, on the wall that that is doable, but um, for The inflow vents we're probably going to need to put them on the floors uh, But that's okay because likely what we're gonna have is a farm around the edge So these vents here aren't going to be stepped on because we'll have um, Objects built on top of them And I think what I'll do is have my passive vent at the bottom there Saving the, the real estate above the vent for switches and, and stuff. Okay, there's my iron. I was a little low on iron, copper, and gold, I noticed. Um, so that's why I cranked out all that stuff. And maybe I'll get that all smelted now that it's uh, becoming nighttime. The bottom floor here is a little bit different, um, vent-wise, because we'll have an airlock, and this airlock, if 
if you look at the floor plan, uh, actually this airlock should be bumped out one, I think. You know, if you look at the floor plan of a floor above, uh, it is a 3x3, three three, and our atmospherics room is an offset to 3x3, three three, so it goes deeper. Um, and this might be something we want to change, possibly. So, if we change it, I would move these frames out a bit, and then move our airlock. But actually, I'm sort of okay with the bottom floor being a slightly different um, design. That's sort of fine by me. So let's go ahead and set up these vents. These are the inflow vents. We'll put them on the edges here. And then, uh, looks like I'm gonna use some steel sheets to weld. These should be constructed. Of course, I'll deconstruct them uh, eventually just so that I can move some ca cabling that's inside of them. But um, for now, when we're laying out our, uh, our plumbing network, I guess I could have the vents uh, laid out mimicking the floors above. So I'll, I'll just do that. I'll save my, my wall space. Perfect. So now we have uh, pass events on every floor, uh, which will allow us to, you know, hook up back pressure and pressure regulators and start to, you know, it will be the initial plumbing or initial HVAC. I shouldn't call it plumbing because it's not like I'm setting up toilets and showers, uh, but the initial, you know, HVAC systems that we have. So if we get a head count of, or a part count, we have four on the first floor, which is going to be four regulators. And uh, for now, I'll just take the elevator up. We have four more. Obviously, if you can do the math, we have 12. So we have 12 of these um, pass events that will need um, regulators. Now, the regulators, we could have um, pressure regulators, one pressure regulator for two vents per floor. We don't need a pressure regulator for each of these vents. Uh, as long as there's pressure in the pipes, um, it, it we don't need it. In fact, we could actually have it set up so that um, we only have one pressure regulator and one back pressure regulator, uh, but I don't think I'm gonna be doing that only because we might want slightly different pressures per floor, even though the floors aren't necessarily going to be uh, isolated atmospherically from one another. And then additionally, uh, there's only so much flow that you can get through a pressure regulator. So what I'm gonna do is actually make six pressure regulators rather than the total uh, 12 per vent. And it should be right, there it is. Now another thing to note is that the fabricator uh, draws considerably or can draw considerably more power um, from the grid than let's say uh, any of these regular printers so you know there's this is not a construction bench that you want to use really really early game which is why I didn't um, because it's costly Now, I might need to clean up some of the random piping I have everywhere uh, because, honestly, it's it, it sort of gets in the way. Now, eventually, we're going to have uh, roof tiles everywhere or, like, wall tiles for the ceilings. So I can put the pipes exposed, and that way I can more easily access them if something uh, bad was to happen. Um, you know, like explosions, etc., and then uh, for pressure regulators and back pressure regulators, uh, one idea I had is to put these visible, controllable remotely, but visible uh, in the sort of elevator gaps. Um, and that way I can access it if I want to. Uh, but the rest of this design, or not the rest of this design, but um, 
the, you know, I've basically run out of time. So uh, if you have any feedback for me, drop me a line. If you have any questions about anything I did in this episode, it was mostly just sort of laying out the foundation or the um, backbone of the HVAC. And uh, uh, But if you have any questions, uh, let me know. And if you have any feedback, I'm always willing to hear it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you tune in next time. Thank you all for watching. Adios, everybody.